my delicious co-creators, Lilu here. I'm on the Juicy Living Tour today in Oslo, in Norway, uh, at the top of this brand new building, at the, the one of the buildings of the Minister of Agriculture and Food, is that right? That's right. <laughs> And uh, behind us, actually, right here, we have one of the buildings where some of the bombs have exploded. And you were you were working in that building. Yeah, I worked there previously, but this is now the Prime Minister building, or was the Prime Minister building, uh -huh. when it was bombed last July. Wow. So it's quite something to have it that close. And huh? the Norwegian are still touched by that event. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm really, really, really excited to speak with you. And I know this happened kind of at the last minute, but that was really, truly one of my intention to speak about this big seed bank in the north of, or of Norway in some islands, uh, 1,300 kilometers from the North Pole. You have been involved for many, many years in this project right from the beginning. So this is juicy because I'm, I'm excited because there's so much information going out on the Internet. You know how it is. So here I'm kind of going to the source and having this information so that we can get clear because it's quite a monumental building out of, in nowhere where there is thousands and thousands and thousands of seeds, millions of seeds mm -hmm. that can be stored. Tell us about uh, how is it called, where it is, why it exists, what is the initiatives. I, I guess it's, the, it's pr apparently 100% uh, um, funded by the Norwegian government. Tell us all the details. Mm -hmm. Well, it uh, was an initiative that started in 2004 uh, when uh, the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources uh, was uh, adopted. And um, then I think mostly in the scientific community on genetic resources, they, um, they decided that now was the time to find one common place to have a backup storage for all the seeds in the world yeah. in case they get lost somewhere from where they're a disaster or? yeah um, of course um, when you put all your seeds in one place of course if the electricity goes down or if there is a fire I mean we have experienced um, water floods and earthquakes and also uh, wars and this type of uh, human strife. Yeah. Because this is a massive, massive construction. Well, it's um, uh, Svalbard is actually a miner society, so they have are quite used to uh, digging into the mountains okay. and kilometers with tunnels. Mm -hmm. So, in in their um, view, there is, is it's not a very big tunnel mm -hmm. inside the mountain, or or um, there there is a big building. Uh, entrance building which is uh, quite uh, extraordinary because it's shaped uh, like a tri triangle and also um, there is an artwork on, on top of it which uh, um, which is uh, giving a blue bluish light which is very nice and uh, but in inside um, the tunnel divides into three chambers and uh, we are now filling out filling up the third no the the mid, the, the, the chamber in the middle uh -huh. with um, and with boxes of seeds from all over the world to be seeds what kind of seeds because there's so many different kind of seeds we're hearing of uh, gmo seeds of course and seeds that can uh, so those are special seeds those are Real seeds? <laughs> these are real seeds. Or Monsanto seeds? <laughs> no, these are not GMO seeds. Yeah. Uh, it's not um, mm, uh, allowed to, to store GMO seeds there according to the Norwegian legislation because... So the they're checked? Yes, and, uh, and, um, and uh, these are, are um, seeds uh, that are collected in the country of origin uh, in these uh, of um, for these uh, type of different types of seeds yeah. and also some are um, uh, plant breeder seeds that had been selected for and and uh, crossed for for many many years which are now stored in gene banks all over the world and used by uh, farmers and plant breeders in those countries but the Svalbard is uh, providing the backup, that's a backup collection of all the seeds.
for the whole world or just Scandinavia? Is, is it only Norwegian or is it because I know there's some similar project that happened in the Philippines or other countries, but it's not really that solid compared to this one. <laughs> Well, there are collections all over the world, but this is the, um, the uh, one uh, big backup collection. And uh, we received... How many seats? It's uh, very close to 750,000 different types of seats. Yeah. But each type, um, for each type, we store about 500 seats. So 750,000... Millions. Yeah, something. And people can bring their own seats? Mm, well, <laughs> not really, <laughs> not really, ah, because I read that. Well, yes, well, uh, mostly it's organizations that deposit seeds in uh, the seed vault and um, not individuals. No, we asked them first to have because this is a backup storage. So first they need a solid um, first uh, first stor storage before they store it, have a backup storage. So we asked them to, to be sure that the facility they use on a daily basis is a safe facility. And also we only store unique seeds. We don't store uh, twins or du duplicates of uh, the same type, many types of the same type of seeds. So the, the seeds should be unique. So, so there are 750,000 unique seeds up there yeah. right now. Yeah. So what are some of the corporations then that, that uh, bring it there? Well, there are um, some international uh, gene banks. Um, and uh, there are also national gene banks and there are also a few organizations um, of um, yeah. more like NGOs that uh, take care of seeds and use uh, the seed vault as a, as a backup. But it's open to all in, in principle, but, uh, but of course uh, uh, it makes more sense that uh, we store seeds uh, from uh, organizations. And also one another quality or qualification is that these seeds are also made available from their original um, storage to farmers, to plant breeders th that like to develop them further or use them to promote uh, their ag or um, or um, uh, uh, s s s so you encourage the, f the local farm, are we still talking international farmers? Yes, we are still talking. Yeah. Uh, so you send them out and they come from there? And well, we don't send, uh, we don't uh, do, we just uh, store. store on behalf of the owners of the seeds. Okay. So we don't give the seeds away to yeah. anyone else, then we just return them yeah. to the owners. It's like a bank. Yeah. So the I depositors give, get them back. I when hope it'll go better than the bank world right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we are taking good care of them. Good. Tell us why this specific location all the way north on an island, uh, not far from the North Pole. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most important criteria is that inside this, the mountains in Svalbard, there are permafrost. There is less than four... Um, uh, degrees minus uh, all year around. So in case we don't have uh, electricity, if, if electricity should fail, the seeds will still be safe there. Okay. So we thought that would be a very important thing for a long-term storage because this storage is uh, planned for uh, hundreds of years. Yeah. Uh, when I saw that, I immediately thought, oh my God, how visionary Norwegians are uh, because a lot of people talk about collapses about uh, the, the world going like upside down and here you go and create this like this block or this massive uh, I don't know in what it is exactly made even that would be interesting but uh, and you you were the ones that put some explosive from my understanding to see how strong it was and and here it's it's I mean how how it's it's a vision no? What does the Norwegian government see or that you see that is coming up so that it's important to do this? Mm -hmm. Well, we think uh, to conserve biological diversity is quite important. Yeah. 
and uh, we have a lot of project and, and uh, engagement in doing that and yeah. we have we co collaborate internationally with other countries and also with um, uh, intergovernmental organizations like uh, UN and uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization and um, we think so this is uh, a part of that work so this was something that we could do since we have this uh, remote place uh, which is cold the whole year around and still it's available it has a um, high-tech place with a university center there oh. and uh, we have a lot of research going on it's um they have a satellite center and uh, a lot of uh, it's an uh, international community i want to show i don't know if you can see the uh, the picture you can look of course on the internet it's everywhere but uh, just so that you can see it so you have a lot of researcher as well there yes but not uh, this seed vault is not a uh, big uh, organization actually there are no one really employed for the seed vault as such we just um, we hire nordic uh, genetic resource center they go there uh, whenever the seeds arrives um, f about five, four to five times a year. They go up there and um, receive the seeds and uh, put it on the right place in the right shelf and uh, do the recording. And also we have um, local people taking care of uh, the temperature, yeah. the the cooling system yeah. and uh, whatever that's yeah. needed but but uh, apart to preserve this is there any other thing that you're that the government is worried about uh, so that it's that uh, solid you know like a global crisis or wars or because it's quite it's quite a yeah, some, strong some I was called this the doomsday vault that was actually I'm not going there if something happens I mean let me tell you <laughs> And I, I think that was the media uh, called it. We haven't really, th that was not um, what we we yeah. thought of. But we, we realized that the seeds that were stored in different facilities all over the world, yeah. many of them in developing countries where there might be a civil strife or uh, where there has been uh, natural catastrophes, but also in from uh, in Western countries, uh, uh, to have all the seeds in one place it's um, is, is a risky thing so yeah. that's the reason why we do it because a lot of people you know I've been interviewing people and traveling all around the world and and one of the preoccupation of people and what's really going on I can see it in the US and everywhere is people are starting to garden people are starting to collect seeds mm -hmm. people are really aware of how important it is mm -hmm. so when we see that there's a big thing like this that is organized by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, this reinforced the idea that this is an important thing to do, and that and it, but it also brings worries, you know. So that's why uh, I was wondering if there was another reason why the government was d was doing this uh, that you would like to expose or, or something because it is a big concern around the planet right now, and you're showing an example and. Uh, so there is lessons in there or precautions or whatever comes out, you know, because I'm here to inspire people, but to also expose information that needs to be exposed. Well, um, of course, we saw that uh, when we, well, first of all, we didn't think of this as a very, very big thing when we built it. Really? No, we thought it was a very um, simple thing. Uh, it was not too costly and it was possible to do it. So that's why we did it. Uh, we saw also that this could be a way to inform other people about uh, how, why genetic diversity is quite important. And, uh, we, but we didn't realize um, the big, big interest it has received. Beyond the scientists, yeah. Yes, be because uh, before, I mean, this was a well-kept secret amongst the scientists, uh, the importance of genetic resources and all the issues connected to that, to that, which is very, very many cool things, actually. But it was not well known to anyone outside of that community. So um, we think this, um, 
the um, recognition of genetic resources and the awareness raising that ha this uh, seed vault has created yeah. is so valuable. It's as well as valuable as the seed vault itself, uh, yeah. uh, really. So, and uh, because we think it's uh, the main thing is to conserve and to m make sure that these uh, seeds are used in a sustainable way. That's the most important thing. And w when I say sustainable way, I'm thinking about uh, uh, food security. I'm thinking about uh, helping small scale farmers in um, developing countries to uh, adapt their agriculture and their small scale production to changing climate or to other uh, other um, difficulties they have in their agriculture because without the diversity without finding specific genes that are adapted to a warmer climate or uh, adapted to the new pest that uh, might may arise uh, it would be very difficult for them to, to uh, increase agriculture or to just uh, keep on with their agriculture as to, uh, today they do today. And um, also in our countries, we, it, it has, as you said, uh, it has an in increased focus, which uh, we think is very important. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's also a concern. You know, it's like people are preparing, but they're concerned. This, this is raising fears also. Mm -hmm. I can see that uh, that was not our in intention at all, to raise any fear. Uh, we think it's important to, uh, um, to focus on the importance of the genetic diversity because it's the basis, it's the main basis for our food production. Yes. And um, in many years now, we have uh, focused, our modern agriculture has been focusing on only a few varieties of, of uh, crops. Of the and um, it's uh, very easy to forget. And a lot of this the diversity has been actually been lost during this last century. Yeah. And uh, it's important to take care of it for yeah. the future. Um, but we see that if there is a, a virus or if there is uh, something going on that just, who knows, get this earth like, you know, uh, just upside down, mm -hmm. that uh, what do we do? I mean, what do we do? Uh, and, and we cannot help to wonder, is there something that we don't know happening so that there is a government and, and, s and some people highly placed that are setting something <laughs> up. You know, you've heard yeah. of the conspiracy yeah, theory, yeah. Emmer. Several <laughs> conspiracy theories. And um, I, I say that there are, there are many important reasons for uh, establishing the seed vault, but those are not one of those <laughs> reasons. Okay. Yeah. And uh, is there some other things that you would like to share about what the uh, the Minister of Agriculture is doing here uh, as part of its plan or some other things regarding this vault? Well, uh, we see also that um, we think it's an important uh, way to, sh to show them or we think it's important to also for the that the seed vault also should be a place for uh, um, international cooperation within the field and uh, the minister has uh, gathered uh, different people from different countries uh, uh, to talk and discuss about the, uh, these issues and how we can uh, cooperate um, globally on, uh, on um, taking care of our future genetic resources and we do this both in um, also on the Nordic setting but also on an international setting so uh, in September we invite uh, the whole world there Can I come uh, yes <laughs> you are welcome um, I don't, uh, it's a very technical uh, event but it, uh, it's a quite important event uh, when we, we will talk about how we shall in the future, uh, we'll share the, these seeds and other types of genetic resources, which is important for food and agriculture. And uh, we try to find common guidelines, common rules for that, etc. Yeah, mm. that's interesting. 
So you you oversee the whole operation. What is your role in uh, in this project in particular? Well, I'm working. It's quite fun actually because I'm uh, working in an office like this in uh, daily life. But now I had to deal with the permafrost, how it works, and also about um, electricity facilities. And uh, uh, sometimes it gets a bit slippery in the slope there, so we have to uh, discuss how to deal with that. And I also work with the budget uh, issues and uh, with. Um, information projects and um, well, on the website and You're everywhere uh, well <laughs> I don't do everything myself but yeah. I, I'm I'm yeah. working with people and uh, in order and it's very fun to to work with people on this project they are uh, very positive and it's very engaging beautiful well th thank you for taking the time to do this interview here on top of this building in Oslo uh, and this changing weather in summer. Woohoo! Bring yeah. on the coat! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Much love, my delicious co creators, wherever you are around the world. I hope this was informational, useful. Please share it. Much love. Bye.